It's my pleasure to welcome my friend and my colleague and my partner to speak to you today as our keynote speaker, Professor Alan Mornick. You and your children are, are, are the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, wherever immigrants go, they excel. Here at Brook College, this is the most selective college of the 17 colleges in the CUNY system. Yet despite how difficult it is to get into Baruch College, more than 70% of our students are either immigrants or the children are immigrants. That tells me that immigrants are succeeding. This tell, tells me that they're succeeding despite the many hardships that they face. Today I want to then address you as future leaders, or the parents of future leaders, and talk to you about some issues and concerns that I have about the future and hope that you will join with me in making the country a better place. New York is a welcoming place to immigrants, but not all of America is quite so friendly. Anti-immigrant sentiment, or what we call nativism, is rearing its ugly head in this country. Throughout our history, people in this fine country, and all the things that you've heard about it are, are things, how wonderful it is, are things that I agree with, that I think are so true. I think are, are true, but despite how fine our country is, we have sometimes turned on our newcomers, particularly during difficult or hard times. That's the situation we're in today. And I want to tell you a bit about this history. Of course, I am a professor, and that's the kind of thing I like to talk about, but I want to talk to you about it today so that as you go forward as full participants in our democracy, you'll be reminded of some of the hardships of those who came before you. As was mentioned, today is St. Patrick's Day. We celebrate the culture of our country's Irish immigrants. But it's worth noting that the very first nativist, the very first anti-immigrant movement in the United States was directed at Irish. Hard to think about that now since they're so well integrated in our society. But in the decades just prior to the Civil War, I know you all know about the Civil War because you had to study about it in order to become pass your civics exam, right? So I know you all know about the Civil War. During, just prior to the Civil War, uh, hatred of the Irish became so extreme that there were church burning, segregation, discrimination, job ads often read, no Irish need apply. One out of six voters, one out of six voters were a member of a party that was organized just to stop Irish immigration and to fight Catholicism. That was called the Know Nothing Party. So these early Irish immigrants had a very rough time here, but eventually they did overcome poverty, they overcame discrimination, and they prevailed. And of course, one of our most beloved presidents, John Kennedy, I know you all know who he was, was a descendant of one of those early Irish immigrants. But perhaps the most vicious and long-lasting nativism was directed at Chinese immigrants. Chinese are the only nationality to have had a specific law named for them, barring them from coming to the United States. And that was the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1982, which barred new Chinese immigration. And of course, it was followed by a number of other anti-Chinese laws. And one victim of these laws that I teach about in my classes is a man named Che, che Chan Ping. And I want to tell you about Che Chan Ping. He was already here in 1982 when these laws passed. So he had a right to stay here. After a time, living in the United States and doing just fine, he decided to take a trip home to China. And he got what we would call today a re-entry permit. Some of you may have gotten a re-entry permit yourself on your process of becoming a permanent resident. So he got the re-entry permit, which would allow him to come back. He went to China. He came back on a boat. And while he was on the boat in the ocean, Congress passed a law voiding his re-entry permit, saying that his re-entry permit was no longer valid. And when he got to San Francisco, he was arrested and he was deported back to China. That's how bad things were in the 1980s, pardon me, the 1880s for Chinese immigrants. But today, Chinese and their descendants, they too have prevailed. They're among the most successful of immigrant groups. They've held leadership positions in government, business, and academia. And here in New York, we have a Chinese immigrant as controller, one of our top uh, citywide positions, John Liu. Some of you may know him or know, know of him. 
And then today, it is our Muslim neighbors who are feeling the greatest pain of this nativism, this anti-foreigner sentiment. With unemployment high and the world economy in turmoil, this is a situation where this kind of feeling, this nativism thrives. Mosques are being burned, people are protesting the building of new ones. But Muslims, immigrants and those born here, just like the Chinese and the Irish, <clears throat> And all of you help make America the great country that it is. There are two members of Congress of the Muslim faith, and we have, of course, many outstanding business and academic leaders. And I'm confident that in the years that come, this ill treatment of Muslims too will pass, and they too will prevail. And though Muslims are getting the worst of it, many other immigrant groups, particularly those from Spanish-speaking countries, are the victims of prejudice and hate and discrimination. The lessons of this history is that discrimination against immigrants is not something new in the recent period in America, but it's an old, old story. Many other groups, Jews, Italians, Greeks, Japanese, among others, all have been persecuted, but they all have prevailed. Perhaps some of you have experienced this dark side of American character, but my guess is you too will prevail as well. You and your communities will make great contributions. I'm sure of it. I'm confident of it. And as you become part of the American fabric, please always remember where you came from and why you came here. America is special because we welcome the stranger. I welcome you, and I hope you will join me in welcoming those who follow you to the United States. Thank you so much.